Now, this is the second. It's February 4th, 2019. I don't know when this video is going to be up. Now, supposedly it's Black History Month. I don't say that to be arrogant. I don't say that to be rude. Now, me, you guys know on this channel, plenty of times that I say, you know, what I'm mixed with, and I am part black. Again, Cherokee Indian, South African, Jamaican, Egyptian, and Italian. And wh why I don't really know what the title of this video yet. But I'm just going to go into why we really shouldn't be celebrating and be proud of this month. Because we have nothing to be proud of. What have we accomplished as black people in history? And that's what I want to kind of break down the best I can in this video. And point out why we're blind to the fact because we've been blinded by so long by what history books told us. When in reality, we haven't accomplished anything yet. And I want you guys to understand and pay attention to what I'm about to say. Because this is going to open you up. Literally. Again, this channel is about being awoke mentally and spiritually and growing beyond your expectations. I'm going to try to go in order as possibly as much as I can. And make sense of and have and try to make it make sense to whoever sees this. If you guys go back in time, like before Christopher Columbus, right? We had slaves of our own in Africa. We enslaved our own people. That still goes on till this day. A lot of people say, no, that's bullshit. No, it's not. Stop being blind to the fact that that still goes on. Have you guys really truly seen the true documentation of Blood Diamond? I'm not talking about that Hollywood film. I'm talking about the actual real documentary. The one that Paul Wall went on, on BET. And then they had an actual one on the History Channel. We still enslave our own people to mine diamonds for the rich. They get paid. The men get paid 25 cents. We still enslave young women. Like, teenagers, they get paid a penny to do shoes, to make Reebok, the fashion of clothing that we wear today. The women, the grown women, the mothers, the grandmothers, they have room farm. They get paid 10 cents. That ain't much, right? They take in young boys violate them and can treat and produce them into the uh, into their military by the time they're 10 to 15 years old they already know how to kill a grown man in different ways than we know how to kill then by the time Christopher Columbus came the bullshit story that, oh, well, they left because of taxes. That's a lie. Because if they left because of taxes, then why is there still taxes to this day, especially here in America? They left to find new land so they can expand their empire. They left because they also needed workers. Well, they got the Indians. Indians, we had our own slaves too. We enslaved our own people. Don't get, don't get it messed up. All right. They said, okay, well this ain't enough because most of the tribes are savage, savages. People don't know how to act, so they killed them. That came from New York, from Long Island, I do believe. They buried them face down so their souls will never cross over to the other side. Well, throughout the ways of them killing off workers, they notice, oh, we're getting short on workers. But they haven't truly expanded into the lands yet. So, not only did they find more Indians, but they brought over black people. They offered them a portion of money. So, our own people sold us out. In other words, black people sold black people out during that. Said, hey, 
We'll give you this much amount of people for this much amount of money. Sold out. We've been we we still sell each other out till this day. It's just it's modernized now for the law systems. Oh, I'm selling drugs or I did a robbery or murder, right? Okay. Let me think of somebody else who's doing that more so and haven't got caught yet. And let me find several other people on top of that and sell them out to save my ass. Same thing, she's modernized, right? During this, going into the Civil War, we had Abraham Lincoln that wanted to end slavery, but that's not what the Civil War is about. Civil War was about what is going to be the flag that's going to represent us as a nation in the future. We had the rebel flag. The rebel flag is the South American flag. A lot of us down here in the South as black people do carry that flag. People up North don't like it, but history gets it wrong. What the rebel flag represents, the red represents bloodshed. The blue X represents railroads. In other words, they're building railroads to connect states together to make a nation. The 13 stars does not represent uh, racism. The 13 stars represent the 13 original states at that time. But, hit, but rather than learning the real history, we take what we learn from the history books in school, which are fed in us lies. And that's what we go by, by what we read, because we're too blind and arrogant to the fact to be open-minded and to get education. That's the problem with us in the black community. We block off education. So that's why we become arrogant. From that, we go into... After World War II. Which is known as a... Depression. The real government shutdown. I talked about this. I'm going to briefly touch on it. A real government shutdown and a depression means after a big war that has damaged a lot of countries, a lot of families' lives, means you're going to be working, but you're going to be working for free. Because all the products that you're producing is going to be going towards a reback building society again. And you have to sacrifice money because money that is there is going to be going towards producing the materials that are going to be needed. That's what a depression and a government shutdown is. Right? We haven't had a depression since then. And again, I talked about that already. I talked about why the government shutdown is real and why it's not real. As you can see, it went back to not being real. Because it's not. If it was real, then why do we still have jobs? Why haven't people's pay got cut yet? Why haven't people gotten laid off yet? If it was real, then why are people still getting paid from Social Security disability? Why are people still getting food stamps in? Don't chew on that cord over there. Hey, don't chew on that. No, no, you got chew toys in there. If it was so fucking real, then why do I have half a thousand dollar glasses on that cost me six hundred and... See, yeah, $630. Because it's not real. Going into that, we bring in drug use. Vietnam War brought in the introduction of cocaine. Weed. Mainly marijuana. We brought that in into the U.S. The money that we were getting was being spent on marijuana. And I even touched on why the South doesn't have heroes. Because we don't have leaders. We never did. So, we were buying heroin in the 70s. Just as much as weed. The 80s come along. We started buying cocaine. Cocaine brought in a lot of problems for the black community. We started 
killing each other over drugs that we could make. We start killing each other over money that we made and bought more drugs with it. We killed each other over guns. But then we killed each other over turfs and territories that we don't even own. 90s come in. It was heroin shooting up and crystal meth. We killed each other over who's the more crack hitter person. Just like till this day. We kill each other in the early 2000s when it came to the actual introduction of lean. We were killing off each other. We killed each other over who has the better car, who has the better rims. You see what I'm saying? Now, we killing off each other even more with pills. On top of that, we are extreme, we can't think for ourselves because we don't have our minds for ourselves. So we have to have people tell us what to do, what to buy. And it's always been like that since before Christopher Columbus, because again, we enslaved our own people. It's in our DNA. Then when our ancestors were brought over here who were sold out, we're still put into brainwashing, which goes into religion, church. Black people think, oh, well, what we got is church. We got the church. You ain't got the church. It was pro. You were programmed and brainwashed in your DNA to go to serve white Jesus at a black church that's ran by a white man, even though you have a black pastor that's working for the white man. I want you to think about what I just said. And when putting money to the basket for donations, you ain't putting in for donations. You being charged to go to church every Wednesday, every Sunday. Think about that for a minute. Alright? Going into that, black people will say, oh, well, we got football. We got basketball. No, you don't, you don't. Basketball and football has been a white man's sport given to the black man as slaves. It's a slavery sport. The numbers that they put on the black players are branding numbers like they did to our ancestors. One, when our ancestors did it to each other in Africa, and when Christopher Columbus did it to the other ancestors that were brought over here to the new country, to the new world. Branding numbers. To make sure you know who you are, so I can keep track of you of all given times. Slavery sport. Brand numbers. Think about that. Just like when they brain, just like you're so fucking ignorant and stupid enough to buy the same fucking sports game over and over. Yeah, you, you buying the same shit over and over. Then Atari had basketball football games. Nintendo had basketball football games. Sega had basketball football games. Dreamcast had basketball football games. PS1, same thing. PS2, same thing. So forth and so on. You're buying the same game. The only difference is, is the graphics and new characters. That's it. But if you look in your closet or in your game collection, you're going to find the same game that you're buying over and over again for $60. Just like shoes. You're buying the same pair of Jordans over and over again that ain't even new because they have a warehouse full of them and they're not worth nothing. So that 70 to three two hundred dollars from a game to a shoe which you can put that towards is saying okay i gotta see what my kid needs i gotta see what bills i can keep up on but we don't think like that because we're not financially smart you see what i'm saying just like when those say they're woke they ain't really woke being awoke with the crystals the meditations and worshiping a god that's that's written in another language you don't think they did deals with each other, too? You're following fake prophecies. Alright? Because of what I'm saying, even going into what true leaders act have we actually had that wanted to do something? We had Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, JFK. They actually stood for something. But because they stood for something, they actually want to do something, 
They got assassinated for their action. But look what they died for. They died in vain because we still do dumb shit today that we tend to protest about. Now I'm going to break that down. Let's start with Black Lives Matter. If we say Black Lives Matter, it doesn't matter because we don't care about our own lives. If we did, we wouldn't be killing each other over bullshit. Black Lives Matter movement was created by a white guy. You guys didn't know that, did you? White man. Black Lives Matter movement took care of the white community during the flood in Louisiana or Florida. Black Lives Matter didn't do shit during the police riots that people wanted to bring it back up. Black Lives Matter movement stood with Trump during his, uh, his uh, regulation, his election. Look up, there's videos of it. Everything I said, look it up. They don't give a fuck about you. But we invite the same fuckery and the coon shit that we try to protest about. So we kill one another, it's okay. But if a white guy kills one of us, we want to grab a pitchforks and... Oh, hey, don't you want those damn cords? Fuck. So we want to grab the pitchforks and throw a fucking mob party. But when we have a peace riot and marches, we invite the same ignorant ass coons that's going to start shit in this peace riot and this march. And then we got to have a march for that because something broke out. We don't have control or leadership no more. Because now, not only are we selling drug use to our kids coming up now, but we're also selling them confused sexuality to make them think there's something that they ain't. And that's the black men doing it. Down here in the South, we're the gayest fucking coast ever. From Columbia, Tennessee, Nashville, to Atlanta, and then Louisiana. This is Bate Boy Land. That stands for faggot boys. Also, from now Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York is now that way. So we're selling sexuality to young men. And it's the grown men doing that. And it's in the black community. Some people say, oh, but we got hip-hop to be proud of. No, fuck, we don't. Hip-hop ain't even our shit. The dance and the sound came from Jamaica. Rhythm and words came from Africa, but they didn't mold it into nothing. Hip-hop came from rock, that came from pop, then came hip-hop, and then rap. Then we took that, when we had fun with it, with DJing, breakdancing, then rhyming. But we don't own hip-hop. Because the white man seen it and said, you know what, I wonder if I can make something off this, let's profit off. And that's what they did. They took it, because we gave it to them, and they said, you know what, now you guys have to sign papers or contracts if in order for you now to get paid in this thing called hip-hop. So we don't own hip-hop. Just like we don't own black businesses. You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying, well, what do you mean? I'm going to break something down to you. Everything you do, you sign a contract for in life, man. I don't care what it is. First word, con. Second word, track. Break that down. In other words, I'm going to con you as much money as I can get out of you. Track means I'm going to put you on a certain amount. As long as I want to. Right? So, you want to start a business that's supposed to be quote-unquote black-owned, right? Well, you pay the $300 for business license. You pay other money on top of that to get it confirmed. And also go through an LLC business, right? So when you sign that contract along with your name, the name of your business, you already signed up your business to a white man. Because the white man's going to be handing you that. Which means he owns not just you, not just the name, but your business. Same thing when you rent out a venue spot. You rent it out to a landlord. Landlord could be white. You sign a contract for that, which means your landlord... Not only owns that spot, can also choose when to kick you out and raise up your rent too. 
So we really don't own shit when it comes to black owned businesses because black people don't even own their own shit. We have we don't own anything. What's there that we own? We don't own nothing. So you mean to tell me throughout all of history what we have to be proud of and to own is what? Killing each other, abusing our children, wasting money on drugs, alcohol, going to the club, not paying our rent, not paying our food. And when it comes time for those things, we ain't got to give. And that's why services take away our children. And that's why you're out on the street homeless in a homeless shelter. You mean to tell us we're well, proud to have slave numbers on our back when we when we rooting for these football teams or basketball teams that's white owned that gives players slaves numbers like they did to our ancestors when they brand them to keep track of them? You mean to tell us we have something to be proud about with hip hop because even though it's really owned by white power, that's all that's the best way I can pour my phone one out. What, you know, again, as I was saying, so you mean to tell me, you know, throughout Black History Month, that's the shit we have to be proud of, and not even going into that, the things that we see that's being posted on social media by other people, is we're practically celebrating the fucking pain and misery that our ancestors went through, and ain't none of it had a good outcome. Nothing good came out of it. So again, you mean to tell me? What we have to fucking be proud of is pain and suffering, for one. Two, what, being dumb, being fucking dumbfounded and still brainwashed slaves? Because, again, we listen to one of our own with actual education. We're going to say, oh, they're fucking stupid. They're um, coons. But when it comes to a white guy, we're going to be like, oh, he's smart. Is that what we have to be proud of? No. So you mean to tell me what we have to be proud of is, what, spending our money on drugs, alcohol, going to the club, rims, and neglecting our kids, neglecting our responsibilities as adults and as parents, as paying, what, rent, utilities, and food? That's what we got to be proud of? So you mean to tell me we have something to be proud of by championing the fuck shit, the cone shit, Rather than the good stuff. You mean to tell me that's what we have to be proud of? You mean to tell me we have something to be proud of by saying, Oh, we got hip-hop. We don't own hip-hop. We sold that out. You mean to tell me we have something to be proud of when it comes to fucking sports? Because we have our brothers wearing slave numbers in a slave game. Like I said before, the numbers like that came when they used to brand our ancestors with numbers. Slave numbers. You mean to tell us what we have to be proud of us spending $70 on the same fucking game over and over and over again? You mean to tell me we have something to be proud of when we spending $200 on the fucking same pair of shoes we have over and over again? That's what we got to be proud of? That's Black History Month? No! That's a fucking lie. Again, our lives don't matter. We don't care. We kill each other over shit, man. And to me, that's what Black History Month is. Black History Month is a hypocritical cool month of the celebration of bullshit. Yeah. We ain't own shit. We ain't never own shit. That's it. That's all I gotta say, man. So Black History Month is a fucking lie. We ain't own shit. We never will. And we never will be shit either.